All right. So today, uh, working on comic book month and we're getting into environment and uh, how we're going to do those layouts. So I want to do two things with using perspective and composition, and that's create a city and a fantasy landscape. So as we're drawing, you know, how we're putting things in perspective is key. Um, so we're going to start with this. If you have a ruler or a straight edge, I would recommend. I'm going to do I'm going to do two boxes across I'm going to do a I'm going to just take my paper and split it in two. So it's going to be here. Doesn't matter how neat the line is. So this is going to be my cityscape on top and then on the bottom is going to be my fantasy landscape. So we're going to use kind of Chicago where I'm from and Asgard, where I could be from <laughs> if I was Thor. All right, so bottom one, uh, Asgard-ish, top one city like Chicago. So when we're kind of planning out and getting our cityscapes down, you can literally do anything with it. So um, use visual reference. If you have pictures of any city that you take or that you see online, you can use that as a visual reference. So what I'm gonna do is I had two point perspective in. So I'm gonna take a line and I'm gonna put my line toward the bottom and this is gonna be my horizon line. So what I want you to do is take a line, put it at the bottom, toward the bottom, the bottom quarter of your frame. And this is gonna be your horizon line and then I'm gonna just make two dots. All right, those are my two points perspective, which means that anything coming off this I'll be able to plan out using two point perspective. So in, in my city, if I were, for instance, to take a line and go this way with it and take another line and go this way with it, right there, I'm looking, I'm gonna say I'm looking down a street. So when I'm doing my buildings, right, I'm gonna have the rooftops are all gonna be slanted down to where I'm looking toward one point and the my horizontal lines here are going to be the other tops and sides so i'm going to do this i'm going to start off with one line going straight up and down all right and this is going to be one building right here so i'm just going to erase this line a little bit now i'm using a blue pencil can you guys scott can you see that all right yes it's a little light but i can see it all right well let's i'm going to switch so I've got my two point perspective in and so I've got my lines down. I'm gonna do just a couple, I'm gonna do a few buildings. So it's just gonna be straight lines. It's all I'm gonna put in right now, all right? And then maybe I'll end it there. Now, it doesn't all have to be the same height. So all these buildings are the same height. If I wanna have buildings, maybe they're in the background a little bit. So I'm gonna, I'm going to go a little higher and I'm going to do a few lines up and I might show that I've got a building behind and maybe this building goes all the way to the top and I've got another building down here that only goes to the middle. So just like that, I've kind of got multi layers. I'm using my, my perspective point here. Okay. And then, this would be the side of the building. So this is a straight horizontal line right along my horizon. I'm gonna do another, I'm gonna do another tall building. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go even taller down here. I'm gonna go super tall. I'm gonna have another line come out. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go through the roof on this one. and show some difference in sizes for buildings. So just like a city, right? Where you've got buildings behind buildings, stuff like that. I'm doing the same thing. And I'm gonna say these two buildings here are connected uh, as far as like the walls kind of touch like you would find in a city. So I'm gonna leave that line in here and I'm just gonna get, these are basic shapes to start with. All right, now I'm gonna go through, I usually don't erase this soon, but just so you can see, 
how it's coming along. I'm going to erase here and here and get an idea of the size and scale. So starting off already, I've got I've got a taller building here. I can even, you know, make make a tower on top of this if I wanted to. Again, I would just use my perspective line as it goes a little taller. As a matter of fact, why not go ahead and try that? So I'm going to say that this line for this building, yeah, and it may even go off the frame. So it does. If it does go off the frame, that's okay. And I'm just going to have something that. There we go. So I have some different heights in my buildings. And then even this one here uh, sits back a little bit. I'll say that maybe that sits on top in between the two. And I'll just make my line here. It'll be like two apartments. Okay, so I've got my, I've got my one set. Now, I'm keeping it very general at the moment. I'm not doing a whole lot of detail to it. What I want to do is get all of my I want to get all of my lines in first. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do the same thing over here where I'm going to get my street. So this will be like intersecting streets. Moving down downtown. So maybe like right here is where I've got I'm going to put a building up in here and a building up in here. All right, so maybe as I'm coming closer and then I'll, I'll split this out a little bit, but what I wanted to do was show some dimension in the cityscape. So I'm going to just do a, several lines going out. That way I can, I have varying degrees of which I can make the heights of my buildings. Same thing over here. And so we'll go up a little higher. Maybe there. All right. So you can see in two point. Is it getting fuzzy? It looks like it's getting fuzzy. A little bit. I think it's, it's trying to focus every yeah, time. It's I'm trying focus. to focus. All right. So I've, I've got. I've got two avenues that I'm going down. You know, I've got two streets, maybe they connect right here. And again, I'm gonna just do some basic shapes to start off. So I want you to do the same thing. Um, some basic height to my buildings. Uh, I'm gonna go tall on the first one. And the fact that I have varying, I use my perspective lines to make different heights. And two, this comes in handy when you're when also you're doing like different levels and floors so that you can get things to where it all makes sense in perspective. All right, so let's see. I'll do this. I'll bring this down a little bit. Again, just get your basic shapes roughed in. And then from here, we will begin to add some detail, but I just want to get my perspective in first. All right. And while it starts off boxy, we'll be able to add some arches and other items. Let's see, maybe a bigger alley in between that. And then again, I'm going to use this too for the background so that I can make some taller buildings behind. And the same thing over here. All right. Just get some basic stuff started. Again, I've got little alleys in between my buildings. So you can see some edges there. And then I'm gonna connect this piece. So these will be, this is like where, there we go. And maybe, maybe I'll have 
So I'm coming off frame a little bit. I have a, the, the facade of a building here. And then this is gonna sit in a, a little bit in front. There we go. Okay, so fairly quickly, I've been able to map out right what I'm what I'm looking at in this cityscape where I'm standing at a central point right here, and I'm able to look down two streets at the same time. So if I'm sitting here in the middle and I'm looking down a real street, it's going to look like this as I look to the horizon. And now that I have my basics in, what I want you to do is add some character. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit for this and see if that helps. All right, so. I'm gonna take my buildings and I'm gonna say that these, these buildings here are four stories. So I am gonna to attempt to fairly equally divide into four, like so. All right, and I'm gonna use this as a guide for windows, stuff like that. So. I'm gonna say that each one of these has maybe three, we'll say three. And also the, the closer you get to the camera, the further apart the windows will get. And then the further down you go, the closer they get. So there's this and then up here and notice I haven't drawn a line for where my windows are uh, as far as the top goes, but I can kind of mimic this edge right here. And also as you get closer to the camera, your windows will get a little wider. All right, so I'm already starting to put in how this looks. And if you want to be more precise, you just add more lines. So get your, pers get your rulers out, pop those in. I'm going to do that here. So this will be like the break between the, the, um, the floors. All right, and then uh, we're going to do this with a straight light, straight line down. So I've got my windows and then I'm off running off the ground here, which is fine. So that just means that these, I'm gonna fo follow this line straight down. So you're not gonna be able to see the sidewalk or anything as you get closer. All right, add a few more windows. It's a lot of caulking right there. Okay, so I'm going to just focus on this real quick because these I'm going to say these are Florida, Florida ceiling windows. Here's the piece in between. And then we're going to have like a an overhang here at the top. So I'm just going to concentrate on this at the moment. And add some detail. Obviously, we're not, I'm not going to flesh out the whole city. But I want to spend the next 10 minutes just adding a little bit of detail to this so if i'm looking at this in perspective and i want to add some character to it maybe i've got some ornate decoration maybe this is an older building from the early 1900s so i'm going to add some trim around and then two i'm going to add the interior Kind of frame like so so i'm creating some dimension already and then from here is where i'll put my kind of the the inside where the where the glass is now yeah as we as we do a little shading on it and i'm just doing this only in black and white to start so i can understand kind of the tone. I'm just going to shade in this first part and you can already see there's this kind of gives me some separation. So maybe my light sources down here, right? I'll just say the sun is setting. It's daylight savings time, right? So my sun's down here. It's a little cloudy out. It's snowing here already. 
which is ridiculous. T, are you getting snow? You're the only one here who lives in a cold weather climate. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the same where I'm gonna shade in the interior of my window here, just that frame. So it gives it a, you got snow recently, but not today. All right, well, I guess I'll be the only one. It's fine. It'll be 60 soon enough. All right. So, sure, that's a wrench, but you don't need a wrench to do that. Um, now that I have this in, you can see I'm already at, like I've got my detail in on the city. I'm just gonna concentrate on this building. I'm gonna put an overhang, kind of like they have. Uh, if you go like downtown Chicago has some gorgeous architecture. Thank you, Nathaniel. I let my child do a excavating dinosaur thing with a wrench, a crescent wrench, no less. All right, so notice as we're, as I'm kind of going down, I'm creating little brick like pieces in here to show that I've got an overhang, I, I've, it's curved. And then my, the, the, the facade is straight up and down and then I have just this curve that goes in there. So I've got this kind of cool effect as I'm building my cityscape, right? And I've got this first building, this will be like a residential building. <laughs> yes, you've got a wrench, you don't need a wrench, but you have a wrench and there we have it. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit more to the frame. I'm gonna keep my pencil work kind of light and loose because I can go back later and uh, add a little bit more detail. But for now, I just want to get the idea of it down. Again, I got these gorgeous floor to ceiling windows. And then you can see the interior frame there. Um, I am both Aardvark and Ben. All right, here we go. Aardvark is my phone. Okay. All right, there we go. So I've got it real loose in there. I'll, I'll do a little shading on the, on it. So again, I, I have some distinguishing features of my, of the interior of my windows, just so that it's inset a little bit in the building. Yeah, nobody with a knife, I hide all those. All right, here we go. And then two, keep in mind, even my window, you can see anything horizontal here is gonna follow my uh, follow my perspective lines because if I, if I did this line straight side to side, it wouldn't make any sense visually. All right, now, if I wanted to do something like little bricks, I'm not gonna do a ton of little bricks, but I'm, I'm not gonna draw every tiny brick. What I might do is I might show some lines that come through like this again, keeping with perspective. And then I'll do, you know, the line here, like so. That way when I go to ink this, um, I'm not inking every single brick, I'm just showing that there's some definition. So fairly quickly. Oh, that looks awesome, man. Um, and the leg also, very cool. So super quick, I've already got a building taking place, right? And I've got some brick facade. I've got a window that's inset a little bit, piece of cake, right? And then I can do this and take that to my entire drawing and start to add things that have some interesting features. So let's just say, for instance, on here, I've got a giant archway door. My arch is gonna be a little slanted because it's in perspective and it's going to take up this whole thing so i'm going to have this giant there we go and then i'll have an, an inside to it maybe, maybe this is like an alley or something and you're, you're going underneath into this building and then there's this little place so maybe the doorway is off there i've got a little sidewalk action and this is a one-way street, so two lanes or a two-lane one-way street. This is 
Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got that down. I'm going to just finish this up and then we're going to move on to our fantasy set. And all I want to do is I want to get in some major composition elements. And so we're going to think about what's in the scene. So when you're designing, because doing this is, a, is design as well, you're designing out a layout. Let's add a few more little bricks in here. Okay, sorry if it's a little blurry, it's trying to focus on my hand. All right, I don't know, but you'll have to put it together. Okay, it's part of a dinosaur bone. All right, there we go. All right, little bricks. I got enough in there that I can stop is, let's see if I can get that to focus correctly. All right, there we go. So there's my, there's my one building. You see it's going down. Here I've got, you know, the inside to an archway here also. Who knows what'll happen with that? I've got my light source down here, which means my shadows are like, like this side of the building would be a shadow, this side would be light. All right. There's our there's our first one. Yahoo, we got a perspective scene down. All right. Now we're gonna get into Asgard. All right. As we get into this. I want to do something where I, I'll maybe I'm using a little bit of perspective. Um, I'm going to put my horizon line at again the lower part because I'm going to build on top, and I'm going to have one horizon point here or like perspective point. We'll see how much I use it because really this is going to be I'm going to have like a giant Asgardian castle or something that's kind of floating. So but it's going to be off in the distance. So what I want to do is my main action on this panel is to show the distance that I have to travel between where I'm at, where the viewer is at right here and, or the character without showing necessarily the character, I might block it in a little bit and the distance to which it has to go. This character has to go in order to get to this castle in the distance. So all I want to do Daddy, is like I'm going to frame this oh, in and as a matter of fact, I'm going to put my character. I'm going to put my character here. So I'm just roughing it in. That's I don't need to show any detail. I just have character, right there. It is, arms, perfect. Okay, staring off into the distance. Now, what I don't want is because I want the main focus to be going from here to here. In my in my drawing, I want you to take a look at the main character. And I want you to see where they're pointed to. So this is going to involve two things, composition and then color. So I'm going to very quickly sketch out a giant Asgardian style castle. It's going to be huge. All right, got some pieces on it. Um, I don't have to add a lot of detail to this because it's super off in the distance. So it'll you'll see very little detail at all. Maybe, maybe a little bit with light sources. And because I want to, I want to bring my viewers' attention in. I'm going to have these mountains that kind of ride off here, right? So my lines are pointing in, and then I'm going to have lines pointing this way. And I'm just going to put maybe there's a river kind of like it's kind of like the rainbow bridge, except for this isn't a rainbow bridge. It's a river. But I've got maybe some pieces. Right. And so you can see my I'm going to focus on this. I'll have more. I would have more detail on my character and I'm looking straight when it's going this way. And then I think what I'm going to do, too, is I'm going to add a sun setting. It's going to add maybe a couple of clouds. All right, there we go. So I've got some clouds in there, that's working. Um, I'm able to keep my attention focused on this. This will actually be darker because it's behind a light source. And then I'm gonna add another kind of mountain range off here. So real quick, I've already been able to just very quickly block out what I want in my kind of fantasy style landscape. We'll get this mountain range to come this way. 
Let's say there's a forest part thing that they're coming out of here. All right, so I've got my basic blocking in. Now, what I wanna show, what's gonna be a little bit different is there's there's a lot of shading and stuff going on in here and it's gonna create depth. So the, the again, the closer or the further away I get from the camera, the less detail and the more my colors are going to start to blend together. Uh, what? Oh, you got a tail. Awesome. So T says, I like the way you do my likes. You mean when I talk like this and I'm like, yo, like if you do this and then like if you do that, are you talking about lines? <laughs> uh, that does make sense. And thank you. I appreciate that. So it's something that took me a while because it's, it's a little sketchier and rougher. Uh, and I always get so I used to get self-conscious about it because it wasn't it didn't look, you know, I thought I had everything super tight and, and detailed right off the bat. And that is not the case. And what I find, and I, I attribute a lot of this to Chuck because I have some of his drawings that I bought and collected. Um, and then just looking at some of his other work when he would sketch, remember we had that joy of creativity month and where he was just drawing the word joy. And I loved how he did like that dude's pencil work and line work is amazing. And that's kind of what I patterned off um as i started to do this over the many many years um so i like some that are tight some that are jagged little squiggles it makes total sense and you know what i find too is it gives more character i'll find things as i go to tighten it up that you know there's like three lines in here and i'll find the one that i like but i find that it gives the drawing a little bit more character okay so good observation t all right i've got this down now what I want to show is I'm going to start here. I, you did show two arms. I'm going to start here. I'm going to add a little color and then I'm going to work some color and shading into my building here. I'd like you to do the same thing. So think of, think of your landscape. I'm going to say my Asgardian landscape is like sunset. So my skies are going to be like orange into pink into lavender into blue maybe. Um, and then I might have in my scenery here because the color is kind of washing over it. It's not going to be super strong. It's not going to be super strong greens all the way through it. It'll get a little bit more detailed as you get closer. And then the items in the foreground are going to be darker uh, as it comes through and, and more detailed. And then as I move toward the horizon, it's the colors are going to blend together. Yo, you two need to like back up. Thank you. All right, so let's start with let's start with some colored pencils. Oh, that's delicious. And go for sky colors. So if I'm just again, I'm roughing it in and I'm using this as an example of what I want my colors to look like. Use reference. I'm going to start with pink. And by the way, you don't have to do realistic skies. You can do whatever color sky you want. I like to, I think there's gorgeous colors in our natural sky. And that's what I like to use as my, as my base. So I'm going to get this pink. I'm going to fade it into a bit of orange. I'm going to keep my, if you're using colored pencil, I like using Prismacolor Premier or a soft core colored pencil. And the reason I like soft core colored pencils it's because they blend easier. A hard core doesn't blend as well. All right, let me see. I'm going to go. I'm just going to work my color up. I keep it light and I just layer over the top. Okay, so I'm keeping it light. I'm layer. I know it's not showing up as well on the camera. I'm using super light colors right now. But I've got a I've got a rose deco and I've got a peach. So I'm going to go rose deco into peach and then I'm going to take that into like a lavender. Um, the best thing you can do, especially as you're maybe you're making your own comic book and you're doing the color work on it is take a look at nature. All right, imitate that. That's what I do. That's what a lot of artists do. And that way you have kind of a good idea once you get that down of how to bend rules of nature and then how to break rules of nature. All right. So I'm going to go with a, I'm going to go with a lilac. And again, I'm going to keep it light. 
because I'm just going to layer over it and I can blend. So it's all I'm doing. All right, tip from T on colored pencils. If you want your orange to be more vibrant, lay a lighter orange layer down and then a yellow on top. Good advice, T. That's the tail. All right, so I'm gonna get my lilac down. I'm gonna just go very lightly over the top of my peach and I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit. You can see I'm already kind of getting a gradient effect. I know it's a little light on the camera. I'm gonna get a gradient effect. And then I'm gonna bust an electric blue. I'm going to bring my electric blue down. I'm going to lay that over the top of the lilac. I'm going to let that get a little darker. And the higher, if you notice, at uh, looking look at a sunny day, even if there's clouds in the sky, it doesn't matter. And if you notice, it is lighter at the horizon than it is uh, if you look straight up. It's darker if you look straight up. So I'm going from lighter to darker. I'm gonna blend my lilac up a little bit. All right, there we go. And then I'll, I'll darken my color a little bit. Now, I get this from Georgia O'Keeffe, which is, I have Sarah Pacelli and Georgia O'Keeffe as my two female artists of the month and if you take a look at what Georgia does in her landscapes and how she blends color, it's absolutely remarkable. And then if you look at what Sarah does and how she frames, you know, say like an environment, like what I'm doing here with the city, look at how she does her pencil work and then her inks. Uh, it's quite fascinating. All right, so I'm gonna blend this a little bit more. Scott, how well can you see that? Is it a little blurry still? It's a little blurry, but it's not too bad. Okay, you can kind of you can kind of see that gradient effect. I've got this um, super light kind of peach down or pink down here into a, a peach, into a lavender, into a an electric blue, and I would actually do this across the whole sky, um, using this as my center point. So my peach, like use from here and I would do an arch, right? So it wouldn't be a peach all the way across because as you get closer here, it's further away from your light source. So I, my peach would be like an arch and then uh, my pink and then my peach and then my lilac, right? And then my electric blue. So it would actually move like kind of like a rainbow a bit as you move across. Um, and it would be a little bit darker here than it would be if you were looking at this spot here, you would just mimic that. And then I've got my clouds. So the cool thing about clouds in the evening is if you look behind it, so like underneath I might have, actually I'm gonna use a darker purple. Um, clouds have this gorgeous way of picking up the light. And I'm gonna do the back of mine in purple like a darker purple. So this is, if you're using Prismacolor Parma Violet. And then I've got the underneath of my cloud, right? Which is right here. I'm gonna leave that lighter because the sun is showing on that. So what I'm just gonna do is shade top part of my cloud is purple. And then I'm gonna come back in with my peach cause it'll pick up some of the peaches in, uh, in the sky or in the like and in, in this part all right and then i've got underneath which is kind of white so getting back to my lilac and just carrying that over and down just like that i feel like bob ross right now where's my wig where's my bob ross wig i have one so I do not have enough hair to pull off Bob Ross. If you get a chance, you can watch my how to paint a promo code video on YouTube. It's quite awesome. And bananas show up. Okay, so I've got this, I've got the peach. I'm not worried about doing color over my where my castle is because I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to get some pink in here. This will be the last thing I do before I go out to my cityscape. 
All right, so you can kind of see how that's mapping out. It's a little, well, it's not too blurry anymore. You can see that gradient. Now, I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna go, it's not a hard color meaning it's not super dark because it's kind of bathed in that light. And if you notice, like take a look at buildings from far away in a sunset and notice that it, it actually picks up more of the peach and orange color or whatever's at the, you know, whatever's this point right here. So I'm gonna use some peach and it'll be a little bit darker than what your sky is, but it's not like it's solid black. And I would encourage you, even in making darker colors, don't just go to black. Um, use other colors to make to make a black. You'll make a rich black, which is made up of lots of colors, as black is the sum of all color. So I've got some things here. I might see a little bit of light source. So maybe there's like a, there we go. So you can kind of see it's soft. It's not a, it's not a super hard, it's not super dark. I'll add a little bit more peach as I got my sun setting and then I can blend a little bit more. There we go. All right, so you get an idea on that. So there's my, there's my kind of fantasy landscape, right? Starting to take effect. I've got my composition in. Um, I've got my character here. I'll notice that too even like my river will reflect the sky. My colors will be kind of general and not too detail until I start to get closer here and then I'll add more detail and then my lines are all pointing my sight lines are right, pointing right to the main thing all here and if you notice one two three four five I've got quite a few so I've got my center focus here on my right third and then my left third has my destination okay so there's that I'll put these back then I'm going to get up to my cityscape. So <clears throat> what I wanted to show with this is you can have different colors for brick and facades and that kind of thing. Um, if you've got glass and you want to show that, um, your glass is going to more reflect what your sky is. Uh, and then you can have some lines come in that show some window lines. So for this, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a light blue or blue violet as it were and i know i put my sun at sunset but because i did that below i'm gonna i'm gonna skip that right now and i'm just gonna say my light source is coming from up top so maybe it's more like high noon than anything else and then remember if i'm doing a blue sky if i have a straight up blue sky it's going to be lighter as i get to the horizon so I'm going to have it start dark and I'm just going to very lightly move my colored pencil down like so. It doesn't have to be super dark either. I don't want a super dark atmosphere on the top. Okay. So real quick, you can see already my my kind of gradient and then I'm going to I like adding a little bit more than a cool blue. So I'm going to add some surprise, surprise electric blue. And then I'm going to give you an example of like what you can really do with I love colored pencil. I think it's a fantastic medium to work with. I think there's a lot that you can do with colored pencil. And I'm going to prove that here in a second. All right, so I've got my side to side. There's my gradient sky as it comes down. I'll make this a little bit darker. So as you're doing your city, and by the way, I layer. So I'll go over and go over and go over until I get that nice kind of a smooth gradient effect that I want down, which is what I have going here. Now, if I'm going to, I'm going to say this is maybe like a, red brick who almost you could say rose brick ha shout out to samantha but we're gonna go red brick so i'm gonna start with i'm gonna start with beige rose and all i'm gonna do is 
I'm going to give a general color to the whole thing. And if you hey. notice, yes. Um, yeah, and tell you what, in like three minutes, I'm going to let everybody who wants to show, show. So hold on to it for like three minutes, and then I will, I will open it up for everybody to share. All right, so I'm just going to real gently put some color down, super light. And then um, I'm going to show you some a, an easy way to do something like brick where you're not, again, you're not coloring every single brick, but you're able to show um, some definition. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take, what's this? Clay rose. We're going right down the roses. And I'm just going to make one a little bit darker. So I'm going to pick I'm going to pick a few and it's going to be it's a little hard to see right now, but I'm going to pick a few and I'm going to go ahead and color these in a bit and get some shade uh, some difference in in tone with my bricks. You can already see that they're kind of focus is a little bit better. You can see some definition happening. Right, I've got some different flavor and I might layer, I'll layer some color on that. So I've got a clay rose right now. I might warm it up with a little bit of an orange or something, but that way you can go down. You don't have to color every brick. And then you can, uh, even with ink, if you were to ink that, you can very easily show a lot of bricks with not a lot of pen marks. Okay, so here we go. Two point perspective in a city, right? How we get our buildings down, some definition. One point perspective here in a fantasy style landscape using composition, and really composition on both, but this is more perspective lines and this is more composition showing what my main action is, how I'm bringing that all together. And then what the mood is. So my mood down here is kind of happy and bright colors because this is the destination and this character is very excited about that. I don't know what I have going on in the city yet. So there's this and to show you can pull off. I like using half tone paper also. So this is a piece I'm working on currently. Steampunk Marvin with steampunk canine. And I'm going to have a dirigible in the background. Right. So this is going to be the this is going to be his uh, Martian maggot. But I'm working this with just the color pencils I was using just now to do my um, to do my what's it called my examples. I'm going to show you one more. All right, again, colored pencils, layering, 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 layering. All right, so this is my ode to Michael Jordan, care of Marvin the Martian. Right. And I'm just using I've got my light source over here. Actually, it's up here, coming down. And then you can see that reflected on the basketball. Notice that I'm using purples and blues and stuff for shading. I'm not just using a darker orange. Same thing as I get into Marvin's helmet, there's some blues in here for highlights. There's some reds for shadows in the green, that kind of thing. So what you can do with colored pencil, one and two, and I, I made this far more complicated than, than I probably should have, but maybe I'll have this done by the end of the week. So anyway, there's the other one. Now, enough about that. Let's see your stuff. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna, Scott, you go ahead and run that. No, let me just. All right, here's Nathaniel. Check that out. I love that scene. I love that I'm looking up also. It's supposed to be. I'm going to take a lucky guess. That's Peach's Castle from Super Mario Brothers, the main I series. I was going to say that. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. I love it, dude. I was going to say Mario because I saw the little the little pipe in the front. That's yeah, sweet. and the question mark block. Love it, man. Love it. Great fantasy. I too. actually took a lucky guess without looking at the pipe of the question blocks. I was just looking at the castle and it reminded me of Peach's castle. Then I saw the pipe and I'm like, this is 100% Mario 64. You are correct. So, hey, um, Saif, do you have a, do you have your drawing from today? Um, yeah, I experimented with many things to add to my video game. I didn't exactly finish any of this i i made this right now but this would have been all the block of sprites and 
with the perspective theme, I finally found something that I could use. That when Blocko looks this way, more of it is blocked from his side as in a shadow. I like I'm that. I'm not exactly like sure it. if I'm going to use this or not. Okay. But well, I yeah. think it's pretty cool. Absolutely. And I, again, you're right. You use one point perspective and then you're able to get that cube effect to it, which is three dimensional. Very cool. Um, where are we going next, Scott? Next, next up is Keen and then Tater. Okay. Keen. How Nobody. is making a cost from the two times that me and my mom, dog, or cat sit it at a beach house? Like, we've been to two of them so far. And that time that I went to my friend's house, she had a beach house. I was back then and only sold her house for the second time. So, yeah. This is the, these are the garage doors. Oh, that's awesome. Pull over here. There's a baby right here in a uh -huh. crib. And there's a person just, you know. Surfing. I dig it. Nice job, Keen. Very good. All right, T. Oh, I just, I just did them both side by side since I didn't want to use two pieces of paper. Sweet. Check that out. So here's what I think is great. I mean, there's many things, but I love the perspective that you have on the cityscape and the fact that you block some stuff in way in the background. Um, that looks cool. I love that effect that you have on the left side too, where it, it shows like dimension. It's not just the buildings in the front, but you have buildings off to, like to the back of those, like a second layer. And man, what is going on with that fantasy scape? That looks wicked. Uh, I was kind of going for like city centered around this giant pit in the ground and the sky is orange because of the amount of mining equipment. It's pumping a bunch of gases into the air. So <laughs> Can I see that one more time? One more time. Yeah. Yeah, that's wicked, man. That's a piece of art. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Absolutely. All right, Scott, where are we off to next? Who's next? I don't see any more hands. All right, that's fine. Um, if you want to show, now will be the time. If not, no big deal. So there, in a nutshell, right on this one was, you, yes, Samantha. Scott will take you. Dude, check that out. Look at the detail you have in the buildings going on that you're working in. That looks awesome. Thanks, it's based off of Paris. Ah, see, very nice. And you know what, that is, that's a great segue into using something, especially like for you drawing in that. I love the curved roof to the house, uh, to the building that you have down there, that third building. Um, using real life stuff and then drawing off that. There's, you know, the more you do that, the better you get. That's awesome, Samantha, thank you. Thank you very much. Love the two-point perspective on it. All right, dudes, so two-point perspective composition, color, how to wrap all those things in to make something. We've seen some awesome examples of that. So my parting word for today is draw everything all the time. Just keep drawing. Some stuff's going to be awesome. Some stuff's going to suck and it's okay. Uh, the sucky stuff is what we're working out and that leads to more awesome. And I think you guys have done a lot. Can you believe in like one more week we've been doing this for a year? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. A year. So anyway, um, huge progress from all you guys. Absolutely a big round of applause. Um, as we work through this week, Lee's got some great stuff. Daryl's got some great stuff. I'm going to try to jump in on Mike Funt's class because I love props and sets and stuff that he's going to be talking about and how to use those in comedy and just I, that's a, that works really well in our drawings and what we're thinking of. And then uh, Friday is Nayleen. Nayleen always is the the big huge bookend to the end of the week and does some awesome things. So. This week is all about light, layout and background. Next week, we're going to bring it all together. And every class is going to be about putting together this one page kind of thing. So I hope you guys had a good time. I enjoyed seeing all of you. And yes, don't forget to donate if you can. They're donation-based classes. We don't charge a thing. But if you want to help out, that'd be super. And uh, I hope you guys have a great evening. And I will see you next week. Or at Mike Funt's class on Thursday. Who knows? Who knows? Have a great night, everybody. Bye, Thank everyone. You, Thank you, Ben. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.